Oh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining in on the call. My name is Glenn Siders. I'm this year's president of the Iowa City HBA. Uh, we have a number of guest uh, presenters today on this call. Uh, I will introduce them as we go along. We'd like to start out with our own Tim Ruth. Uh, on the uh, camera, it shows up Mary Ruth, but it's really Tim. Um, Tim is the Iowa State Representative which means he was elected by the board of directors from the state Iowa Association uh, to represent, be our conduit and link between the state of Iowa and the National Association. Tim does a wonderful job for us. And I'm gonna let Tim just kind of take off and explain in his own words, uh, what exactly he does and what it means for uh, our association. Tim? Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Iowa the day after it rained all day. But um, what I do, unfortunately, the, the position of state rep, state rep is changing uh, a lot more than I think NHB knows. Um, it used to be before the internet and before, you know, if someone at NHB thinks about something, there's within a moment there's you know a post on social media and it's in everybody's inbox and it used to be that communication came from NHB to the state rep and down well now everybody gets it in the same time in real time so it kind of does eliminate a little bit of that but the good thing that that has come I think one of the really good things that has come out of the COVID event is the state reps, we communicate via the, an email chain. So all throughout this pandemic, we were able to immediately, if you had a problem, you could put it out there and another state rep would respond. And, you know, it, it was really good to see what was going on and to be able to talk to the other folks. And, and uh, one of the things that came up was how S several of the local or several of the groups were financially in trouble because people want refunds from their uh, home show that wasn't being held or what have you. And got into a real in-depth discussion about this is our organization, and if we're members and we're active members, those are things we need. We don't need that, our refund because we're putting our money in to keep our organization alive, and and I'm a firm believer in that. Um, something personally. Uh, being a state rep, you get to meet a lot of really good people. Last year, we had a problem with a project. It got cold. We couldn't get footings in the ground. And I was able to reach out to the state rep in Minnesota, where it happens to them every year sooner than us. And we were able to partner up with one of his suppliers and get a precast foundation brought in. So there's just a wide variety of things as the state rep you get to to experience, you get to meet some great people. And the downside of it is when there's a problem, which you need to fade, sometimes there's a problem with maybe a local or what have you, sometimes nobody wants to talk to you about it either. So, um, you know, Don Beal was our state rep for 30 or 20 some, 30 some years. And you saw it go from absolutely no contact with the members other than maybe a letter to everything's done in real time with email. So there's been a, a massive change, but uh, being the state rep is in a state that has really good EO, state EO and fantastic local EO, it, it, there's not much of a job unfortunately, because bringing the message home and sharing it, they already know it. So you don't really, I mean, when, when Dean Mon resigned on Friday, I texted Jay immediately and he already knew and he was golfing. So stuff is moves quickly, social media, and it, so it makes it, but having the resources, the folks like Reagan, Carl, all of you is huge because we can, if there's a problem, we can find an answer. We had a local person recently asked a question. There was a bill went through the state house. Nobody knew where it came from. Nobody knew who pushed it. 
and it got signed into law, I was able to reach out to Jay. Jay was able to reach out to a couple of people, and within an hour, we had an answer. The same thing nationally, if there's a problem with a bill, there's a problem with a law, there's a problem with something, there's so many people at NHB we can reach out to, and, and that, that is great. But being the state rep is, I, I personally feel the state rep position needs completely revamped because I don't think we need 50 state reps. And I think that we need to enforce the, the rule of six years and you're out because there's still 30 plus year term state reps and there shouldn't be. We need new blood in there to help govern the new model. And uh, I'm very excited. I think Chuck will do a great job as our leader. I'm very sad that Dean's leaving because Dean always was by far the best dressed guy that ever lived. So, you know, we're all gonna have to step up to keep up the, the, the look with since Dean's gone, but, but it's an exciting time. We're gonna have a new leadership partly through the year and the leadership that's gonna last for a year and a half. And Chuck is big on workforce development as am I. So, that's an exciting thing. Hopefully by the end of this, we'll have a standing committee for workforce development. That's something we need. And just a little plug from, to our local members, you need to get involved. You know, I got involved at my first national meeting was in 2016. And I should have been there 10, 15 years before that. Um, yes, I would like to have ran for chairman, but I, I, it's not time. It's not the right time. But I think if everybody got involved, we'd have a lot of new blood and a lot of new blood from members brings a lot of really great ideas and new ideas foster growth. So that's what we need. I'm kind of tired of seeing the same old faces at every meeting we go to in the membership. We need, we need to do something to change the age of the members that are at the meetings. And I, and I don't mean take it down way down in the 10, 20s. I mean, just get it a little younger than the 80s and the 70s. So I think that that's something we need to work on is getting more of our members to go to national meetings and participate. So that's- Thanks, all Tim. Thank you. Tim does a wonderful job. So we call him six year Tim now because of his new campaign. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, he only has four three, years four, and seven. Four, three two-year terms. <laughs> and I should mention, sitting with Tim is uh, Deanna Wobina. Deanna's a, a, a relatively new member to our association. She's been very active within the association for probably, oh, going on two years or so through the Kirkwood Student Program, uh, was part of the award-winning uh, student uh, build pr presentation to IBS. Uh, this spring, uh, and we uh, welcome her as a member and welcome her as a participant. She's uh, apparently uh, has a desire to get very active, and that's exactly what we want. So thanks for joining us, Deanna, and we appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, with us from the National, we have, uh, I think, five different guests with us from the National Association. We have Donna Franza, who is the senior consultant uh, in advisory services. We have Reagan Van Cleve, who's a membership field specialist. And Reagan is a Reagan's, Re, Region C field representative, which Iowa City is in Region C. Carl Eckert, who's vice president of uh, intergovernmental affairs. Katie Crowley, manager of Build Pack fundraising. And Julia Bogue, senior manager of federal legislative. Uh, fortunate to Iowa City, of these five individuals, three of them have either personally been in Iowa City or very active in our Iowa City functions within the last uh, six to 12 months. Donna, who uh, I'm going to let her kind of uh, take charge of who presents when from the national, but Donna was in town just, I believe, is in February yeah. to, to help us with our strategic plan, which we had not had a strategic plan update for a number of years. Donna was spent the entire day with us and did a very fine job in helping us set up our strategic plan, typed, a, typed it all up, gave it to us. We have now been 
kind of uh, working on it uh, within our association, within the executive committee to kind of structure an outline of how we want to go about uh, actually activating and incorporating everything that we talked about wanting to do in our plan. We thank Donna very much for spending her time. That's one of the things the National Association does. It makes their staff available to you as an individual and us as a, a local association, one of close to 700 in the United States. So I'm gonna let Donna kind of take the lead. She will uh, present uh, her uh, national speakers that she so desires. And if you would proceed, Donna, thanks. Great, thanks Glenn. Yeah, uh, it seems like a lot has changed uh, since I was there in February, but I think uh, the goals and strategies that you outlined back then uh, still apply. I know that you all in Iowa City are passionate about growing membership as well as being active and engaged with workforce development, and I think those needs will still be there. What I am reminding folks of in these uncertain times is that it is safer to stay inside the boat than go it alone. Uh, so I think, you know, we're always stronger together. I'm reminded um, of the proverb that says, um, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to get to your destination, go together. So, uh, you know, it's important to make sure that we stay together. So I'm just gonna go over a handful of uh, benefits that come to you from the National Association of Home Builders. These are things that you can tap into uh, no matter what category of membership you are within the association. And then I will um, turn it over to uh, Carl Eckhart and he'll talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the things that we do specific to um, our advocacy efforts within NAHB. So with that, I'm gonna just run through a couple of things for you. So um, as you know, uh, our tagline at NAHB is that we build communities and that really starts with our local, state and national organizations. Uh, so a couple of fun facts about NAHB. We are headquartered at 15th and M uh, in the nation's capital. I always encourage folks when I give this presentation that if they find themselves in Washington, DC, uh, please stop by our offices. Uh, we're always happy to give tours. We have some really cool art that's been donated from different uh, states across the building. And uh, we're always happy to show that off. Uh, we do own the building right at the intersection of 15th and M. Uh, as uh, Tim mentioned, we are uh, governed by our board of directors. Our board of directors meets three times per year. Uh, we just finished up our spring leadership meeting. We'll meet again uh, this fall in October in uh, Kansas City. And then uh, the big daddy of them all is our International Builder Show, uh, which this year in 2021 is scheduled to be in Orlando, Florida. Um, we're working hard to ensure safety of that event and ensure that um, we can gather in a way that makes sense uh, given all that's going on. But primarily the board of directors is comprised of our senior officers, our national area chairman, NHB is divided into 15 specific areas, and then uh, state reps, of which uh, Tim is one. There is one for each state, hence the name. Uh, there's also a few folks who are, um, also included in our board of directors that are special appointments. Uh, within our governance structure is also our leadership council. Leadership council is comprised of a series of delegates. Delegates are nominated to the National Leadership Council on a one per 50 member basis of uh, the local association's membership. So uh, for every 50 builder members or portion thereof that an association has, um, you have the ability to nominate one individual to the leadership council. We also have uh, about 30 committees of which there are several subcommittees and task forces off of each of those committees. And they're really the workhorses of the association. Uh, they're appointed uh, annually by the senior officers and committees range from things like uh, codes and standards to membership to um, single family home building. So it really ranges the gamut and it's a way to get involved not only in the governance of the association but within really leadership in the industry. We really say that our benefits and services are uh, divided into five specific pillars, knowledge, networking, expertise, advocacy, and savings. 
I'm going to go in a little more detail in our savings, and then Carl's going to tell you a little lot more about our uh, advocacy efforts. But within our knowledge pillar, that's really our designation courses. We are uh, doing a lot more in the webinar format lately. We've got a free webinar coming up this week around uh, remodeling. I'm sure Carol has promoted that on uh, your Facebook page and in your e-newsletter, but certainly join us online uh, in these times. As I already mentioned, our International Builders Show takes up, if you were to walk every single aisle of it, about six miles. And uh, we always tell people to bring their good walking shoes. Expertise, you know, uh, you probably have seen our economists quoted on many different uh, news shows. Primarily among them is the Housing Market Index, which is also uh, co-sponsored by Wells Fargo. Uh, we've got a tremendous set of resources in our Eye on Housing blog, which is open to all folks in the industry. And then um, specific to member savings, uh, really what it comes down to is a series of discounts that are available. Um, Carol's going to send out a flyer to all of you that are on the call uh, today that lists out all the specific member savings programs. But uh, the one that I really want to mention to you are the vehicle discounts. Uh, those are on GM vehicles, Fiat Chrysler vehicles, uh, and Nissan. And really, um, the easiest way to explain it is that once you've gone in, negotiated your best deal with the uh, car dealer in your area of one of those specific brands, then you let them know that you are a member of the National Association of Home Builders. They uh, verify that membership and then you will receive an additional uh, anywhere from $500 off the vehicle up to, um, I believe it's about $10,000, $5,000 on some of those really high end uh, vehicles. Uh, but I think the one that really resonates with our members the most is the GM discount because uh, that is on uh, fleet vehicles that you may use for your business and uh, things like that. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Carl and Julia and Katie on uh, their team to talk about advocacy and then um, I'll come back on or Carl will turn it over to Reagan Van Cleve to just share with you a little bit more about uh, some of the efforts that we undertake specific to workforce development that are really important to you all uh, in Iowa City. So Carl. All right. Thank you, Donna. And thank you, President Siders. And uh, thank you, Tim Ruth, for your, your leadership. Um, we greatly appreciate all the time and effort you put into uh, the association. We can't do this uh, without you because you tell us what to do. Um, I am an Iowa native, so you other guys who visit Iowa, that's good, good for you. But uh, I have the tasseled corn, so I uh, love coming back to Iowa whenever possible. Um, I get to work on our state and local government affairs team. Uh, I think on the Zoom bubbles, you see Robin Matthews and Lauren Goodwin. Uh, they're two other members of our team. Our job is kind of a mix between uh, lobbyist and sports agent. Um, we want to make sure that the state and local executive officers look good. They're our uh, sort of our clients and we want them to have all the information they need to succeed in the government affairs world. And uh, then we also uh, do the, the grassroots lobbying and, uh, and then lobby at the state, state and local levels. Um, we handle everything from governor to mayor. Um, but we don't <clears throat> specifically register as lobbyists. We, we make sure that the, the members do the, do the talking. So um, we have a toolkit or a, uh, uh, you know, talking points or some sort of strategy for almost every issue you can think of, um, from tree ordinances to impact fees to design standards uh, to uh, floodplain uh, you know, uh, building, uh, you name it. Uh, there is someone within NHB who has worked on your problem, and it's our job to work with Carol uh, or Jay and, and uh, find out you know, what you need and then get that to you. Um, I, we get to do that probably a dozen times a week from uh, around the country, and I think that's the part of the, the most fun part of our job. Um, the, uh, the other part is the, uh, the grassroots. And, uh, you know, I always say it's way better to go lobby your friend than to make a friend when you need to go lobby. And so I would encourage you to, even if you didn't vote for or don't like or can't stand or hate that human being that is your city council member or mayor or county commissioner, state representative, 
go meet them. Go be nice to them. Uh, they're the ones who have the, the ability to make or break uh, your ease of building. So um, they want to hear from you. They'd be shocked. If you don't like them, you go and talk to them and you're nice. So much more can happen. Um, I think, Lauren, if you're on, do you want to do a little bit on the, the LegCon for a second and the, the other grassroots? Sure. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for letting me pop in just for a quick minute. But first off, it's Legislative Conference Week this week at NHB, and I know that looks a little differently. And I would be remiss if I didn't start by thanking you guys for holding a legislative meeting. So um, thanks for being a part of that and still just leaning into that, even though it looks a little different this year. Um, as far as grassroots, I really love the uh, analogy of us being sports agents, Carl. I don't think I've heard you use that one before. So let's make sure that we still have football in the fall, friends, um, and continue our grassroots pushes. And just as a note on that, we are actually going to be sending out today a grassroots alert that comes through our builder link system. It'll come from an AHB grassroots email address that everyone should be getting uh, urging our members of Congress to reconsider C6 organizations, which would be like our local HVAs, uh, to qualify for the PPP funding. So um, that's just something to take action on. We'll make sure we get that to everyone. Um, of course, Carol, you'll get it too and be able to send it out. But we just want to be able to make sure that we're backing our local associations uh, and making sure that our members of Congress are aware of the vital role that y'all have played in keeping the economy moving in this, uh, in this time. All right, thank you so much. Um, I think that's kind of who, who we are and what we do. Um, on to you, Reagan. On to me, well, thank you. Um, well, a little bit about me. I was just in Iowa City, oh, I think it was back. November. In was it November? We were at a brewery, um, and I had a lot of fun yeah. there. It was good. Can't complain. Um, of course we were at a brewery. What's that? I said, of course we were at a brewery. Of course. Why not? There's, there, you need no reason to drink any more beer, right? So fun times, and thanks for having me. So as Donna said, um, I am the Regency field rep, as you know me, but um, here in the past few months have actually taken on a different role as well as being the membership field specialist for NAHB. So I work with local and state home builders to kind of like achieve their recruitment and retention goals. But for the purpose of today, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about workforce development, which, you know, the state and local association are kind of the poster child for workforce development within the Federation. So I just wanted to touch on some of the things that your national association does for workforce development. So on the screen here, you'll see three different organizations that we work with. The first is the Home Builders Institute HBI. So that is going to be um, the organization that helps like recruiting people into the skilled trades or attracting people into the skilled trades with marketing campaigns and such as that. They also create the curriculum that is then put into schools to train those workers. Um, so I actually was just hearing Tracy um, McMaster, who is kind of our liaison um, between HBI and NAHB in a meeting last week during spring leadership meetings. And she said that in the time, um, between last meeting, they've actually gotten into nine more or seven more states, um, 17 school districts that they were able to get into. Um, so they're doing doing pretty well. One thing I did want to mention about them um, that was really cool during the pandemic was um, they started offering a lot of their curriculum and online courses for free during the pandemic um, when people weren't able to pay for those courses so they could keep people educated. Um, and I'm also going to skip down to National Housing Endowment because it's kind of similar. So National Housing Endowment is our philanthropic arm. It's a 501c3. It's what we use to give scholarships, just like you do at your local association. Um, we use that to give scholarships to individuals who have chosen to build trades um, as what they want to go into. And between HBI and National Housing Endowment, um, we've put together, or they've given us $700,000 to go out and to um, train those skilled workers for this year. So, um, and then Home Inter Innovation Research Labs isn't um, touched on too much. And that is kind of a research and development firm in Upper Maryland that helps us kind of look into home building trends, um, being more sustainable, being more eco-friendly, being more affordable. Um, it kind of just keeps us on the top of our game. So we tend to pull a lot of research from them 
and give it back to our members to make sure that they're staying informed and everything like that. So that's focusing on the future, um, kind of ways to get involved today um, is going to be, <laughs> sorry, um, ways to get involved today. So the first thing that you can do is go on to the website, right? So nhb.org, it has a huge repository full of all kinds of benefits and services like Donna was saying. That's where you can probably tap in um, at you know, just a very um, non-invasive level. And we also have something um, on there right now when you get to the homepage um, talking about coronavirus resources. So all kinds of safety resources, um, you know, information on the stimulus package, whatever you need to keep you informed during these unprecedented times. You can also tap into our education so you can take an online course. I know that if you're a remodeler, we just did a remodeler's reboot and we posted that replay um, for free with your membership. So if you want to spend a couple hours on there, um, kind of sharpening your tools, as we would say, um, you can certainly do that. Attend the Builder Show. So if you want to get out and get meeting some of the other members within the Federation, attend the Builder Show. We typically have about 90,000 people attend this show, um, almost 700,000 square feet of exhibitor space and 150 plus education courses that take place during those two days. So like I'm from Indianapolis, I say the Indy 500 is the spectacle in racing. The um, IBS show is the spectacle in building. So you have to be able to attend it. And then of course here, there's some couple other ways for you to get involved, such as serving on a committee. Donna went through some of the different committees that we have, like membership, remodelers, associates committee. These are more long-term commitments, but it's gonna help you kind of find a purpose within your membership. And then I would be remiss, like I said, I'm the membership field specialist. I would be remiss if I didn't mention uh, the NAP membership drive that's gonna be taking place this fall. And I'm really excited about it actually because it's uh, called uh, Gain of Thrones. So G-A-I-N, if you can't understand my accent, Gain of Thrones, but it's playoff of Game of Thrones. Um, so that'll be going on from September 1st through November 30th. Um, I know Carol has always been good uh, working with us um, and getting some type of membership push in there. So whenever Carol reaches out to you and asks for your help, please do so as new members and existing members um, tuning into things like you are today, you're the perfect people to kind of serve as that advocate for membership. So whenever she calls on you, make sure you answer. And thanks. That's all. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Reagan. I know we're just right almost at 930, but I wanted um, Julia and Katie to just um, talk uh, briefly uh, about uh, their role within our advocacy team, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. So Katie or Julia, Kate, Katie, why don't you go first so you're not talking over each other. <laughs> okay. Hi, so I'm Katie. So I do fundraising for Build Pack, which is NHB's political action committee. So I work with someone else. We split the, the country, and so I cover Iowa. So I work with the trustees and advocates for Build, uh, for NHB who want to get involved and help do fundraising. And then I work with Julia, who do you want to say your part, Julia? It's kind of the same. Go ahead. Oh, you can go, and then I'll go. I was just saying that I work with you to help lobby and you work with the members to help figure out who to support and it comes from like the membership as well. Cool, so I'm Julia. Um, I'm your guys' federal lobbyist. And so what my job in a normal day um, is to meet with your members of Congress and talk to them about issues that affect you. Um, so I meet with Representative Loebsack um, and his chief Eric regularly. I meet with Senator Ernst, Senator Grassley, um, you know, and, and express to them what issues affect you. Um, I'm sure you guys know you're one of the most regulated industries ever, and so there's not a lot of issues that we don't lobby on. We lobby on housing finance reform, tax reform, regulations, codes, um, even mailbox, mailboxes, which I guess is postal reform, um, and patent reform. So there's a lot of different things that, that, that touch you guys. Since there are so many issues, just like Carl said, it's hard to find a member that we can't work with. Um, I don't know where you guys are on the political spectrum for everyone, but you know, we can really find a friend in almost everyone, even, even in Loebsack. I know he's a little, a little left, um, but you know, he's co-sponsored bills for us, including a postal reform bill. So 
just like Carl said, it, it's best to get in there, um, meet with your members, and just have a conversation. I guarantee you that there is something that you're going to agree on or some way that they want to help you. Um, just like Carl said, it's best if you guys are, in, are the ones having the conversation. Carol, um, is, is do, she does a great job with everything that she does to support you guys with our advocacy. Um, and she's participating in LegKind. I, I hope you all are too. It's this week. We have Senator Ernst, I think, at 1130 today and Senator Grassley at three. These are all my time. So an hour <laughs> after for you, <laughs> whatever that is. I'm not too good at the time zones. Um, <laughs> but, but it's really important to have those conversations. You know, you guys vote for them. You're who they want to talk to. You you work in the field every day and, and have the hands-on experience and the, you know, the personal stories to back up what we want to accomplish. So, so I can't thank you all enough um, for meeting with your members and for being engaged. And I, I hope that that, that continues and, and we can do more of it. Um, just one thing, I know I'm kind of singing to the choir here, but, um, you know, advocacy is important. Um, it saves you about $7 billion a year or $5,500 per housing start. So, you know, you may think, oh, these bills take forever or, you know, what, that, what does this, how does this affect me? And I mean, it affects your bottom line. So just taking those couple minutes to send a letter or to meet with your congressman are super important. Um, just to back up what Katie said, our, our PAC opens a lot of doors. Um, so it's through Katie's work with fundraising, um, you know, and, and Carl's, Carl's work with the grassroots. It's kind of the perfect combination of all three that allows us to be successful. Um, so getting involved, you know, at, at any level is super beneficial. Julia, thanks so much. You know, every time I get on one of these calls, I'm reminded of all the good things that are happening around the National Association of Home Builders and none of it's possible without, you know, awesome volunteers at the local level, at the state level and our executive officer partners. Um, you know, we've given you a real thumbnail sketch of the things that are possible within uh, the Federation. And so I do encourage you, uh, if you take nothing else from our time together today, get on our website, make sure you're able to access the member only resources. Uh, the way you know that you're in the members only section on nahb.org is your name will appear in a little blue box up in the upper right hand corner uh, of the screen. So if you don't see your name, that means you're not able to access all the great and wonderful uh, resources that are for members only. Carol, I'm not sure if I'm gonna need to turn it back over to Glenn or to you, uh, but with that, I think that'll cover uh, what our team was hoping to review today. Thanks, Donna, and thanks everyone else from uh, National. Uh, I guess I wanna emphasize how, how one of the greatest benefits you can have as a member is to utilize the National Association and the staff that's there. There's, I don't think there's any question that you could ask that the national people couldn't either answer or direct you to somebody to get you an answer. There are some very educated, knowledgeable people and they're a phone call away, literally a phone call away. Just pick up your telephone, ask them a question. I know we as a, I individually and we as a local association have relied on them many times and uh, been very successful, gotten our answers and had them visit our facility in Iowa City to do things like strategic plans. And uh, as uh, Reagan mentioned, she was with us in uh, November at our annual meeting. She's in the state on a regular basis, so she's accessible to you a couple, three, four times a year, personally. And Julia's been uh, on our last couple. Um, so it's just, uh, it, it's been great. We uh, want to thank those people for uh, joining us today and, and sharing with us uh, the benefits you can receive. Carol, I don't know if we have anything else on the agenda. I want to say that Katie Crowley joined us last fall for our Build Pack event. It was our first ever Build Pack fundraiser. We signed up some brand new Gold Key members that evening, as well as um, 
several contributed a uh, hundred dollars. We had, but we had new people sign up that night. And uh, I don't That's know. If I forgot about have, that. Yep. I don't know if we're going to have a build pack fundraiser this fall with COVID going on. Uh, but we will definitely do it again and invite Katie. It was a pleasure having her here. It was an yeah. awesome event. You guys did a great job. All right, I guess uh, that being said, I don't know that we have anything more to present. Carol, uh, do you have anything further on your agenda or anything you'd like to say? No, I just want to thank everyone on the uh, East Coast for getting up an extra hour early to join us and uh, we will be sharing this recording on our YouTube channel, on our website. We'll send it out in our weekly e-blast. I have Donna's PowerPoint and the member savings brochure that we'll also share with all of our members. And uh, if you want to learn how to get a hold of anyone that is on today's uh, webinar, you can contact me. I have everyone's email address. I even have a few phone numbers. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day and a great week. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.